Okay, so here is our map that we've brought into UDK from uh, UT3. And um, we did that just by changing the file extension. Now, uh, the things that we need to deal with uh, as soon as we bring this into uh, UDK, um, apart from things like uh, missing static meshes, like um, we no longer have a portal there. Um, one of the, uh, and the missing textures, of course. Uh, one of the most important things, or most important differences between UT3 and UDK is that uh, we have um, new lighting technology called light mass in, um, in UDK. So uh, we'll go to world properties, light mass, and we will check use global illumination. And with that checked, we are now going to use light mass to generate the light maps for this level. And uh, that will be off um, on anything that we bring in from uh, UT3, uh, simply because, um, well, that option just doesn't exist in UT3. There are other things um, to think of with lighting. For example, uh, my lighting was provided by two uh, directional lights. Um, I used two because one was the main lighting and the other one was a fill light to uh, light any areas that weren't sort of lit by the um, uh, by the main light. Um, and uh, any areas that weren't lit by this would be in very dark shadow. Because of the light bouncing and the global illumination that light mass does, uh, we don't need to worry about that anymore. So uh, you can just delete out your fill light and uh, just leave it with a, uh, a regular directional light and uh, that will light your levels um, sufficiently. Another thing is that with the light bouncing, if you want to have a similar lighting effect to how it looked in UT3, you'll probably have to come in here to these um, lights and um, uh, you just need to reduce the lighting radius down um, to something a little less redonkulous. So if I want to and um, the light bouncing will actually fill out a lot of that uh, remaining radius that you had previously in, in UT3. Um, now uh, the the next thing that we that we will do is we will go through and we will fill in any areas that uh, are missing static meshes. Um, because we don't have a corner piece for these sorts of railings, I might just take these sorts of railings out and um, and put in something else. Uh, perhaps uh, even bring a copy of these up just to sort of um, just to uh, create that barrier around things like that. Um, and uh, also these uh, these sorts of textures, if we. Um, uh, wanted to do something um, easy, we can just sort of uh, select all surfaces um, matching texture uh, because I know that um, pretty much all of these textures um, uh, are either this roof texture or they're in areas that um, haven't had um, any sort of textures applied to them or any important textures applied to them. I know that I could get away with um, replacing all of these textures with the same texture. Uh, or I should say material. I said texture because it says select matching texture. And so uh, under materials I'm just going to look for concrete um, or floor. And there we go, that nice sort of dark tile texture. Just going to select that and um, apply material. And you can see now that that's looking fairly, fairly good. And once we sort of rebuild our lighting, uh, a lot of that tiling is going to be going to be uh, nicely hidden. Uh, actually, uh, what I might do just to sort of make sure is. Um, Again, select 
matching uh, matching texture and then uh, go to the surface properties and I'll just do a simple 2.0 just to make that texture a little bit bigger just so that it doesn't sort of repeat so there are going to be a lot of little sort of fiddly things that you're going to have to come in here and fix up uh, for example um, one of the things is that we had a um, a little um, a half half of these or quarter of these like a little one um, uh, one unit um, stretching piece that fit in here and that uh, particular static mesh doesn't exist in um, in UDK but uh, strangely enough if we um, find this in content browser um, there is this walkway piece which is um, which is well practically exactly the same as the piece that we are missing um, it's just that it was in a different package or had a slightly different name and so we can come in here and um, you might find that there are static meshes that um, are nearly identical that you can replace uh, for each each of these um, uh, these items and so uh, I'm just going to um, pause the video and uh, when we come back uh, we'll have a look at um, the level with um, a few sort of extra things added and uh, changes made to update it to the um, to the next generation of uh, UDK. Okay, and here we go. This is how the level looks now. Um, now in uh, UT3, uh, we originally had one big sort of uh, round. Um, platform that we could use. Uh, in UDK uh, we only have the quarters of that so I've just um, substituted that for those. Uh, we don't have any cross um, crossroads pieces or intersections in our walkways and so I've just taken a um, uh, I think it's a, a lighting mount reversed it and scaled it up to to fit in those um, those areas. Uh, the portal we have changed for this um, piece of geometry which was originally massive we've scaled it right down and we've also um, we've also chosen these uh, new sort of vortices to um, uh, to fill in as our portal um, active meshes and uh, you can see that with the uh, lighting rebuilt uh, things are looking pretty good um, there's a bit of a black spot there where I've just uh, just deleted a static mesh, but we'll um, we'll fix that up later. Uh, I've also um, come in here and made a couple of um, uh, changes, and um, I've put a couple of doors um, in the uh, in the uh, lower levels here, um, and you can see that uh, we also have a portal there that we have to deactivate in order to get up to those um, those higher levels and again without a, uh, a cross piece or an intersection we've just sort of um, brought in another one of those uh, large uh, square pieces in order to um, in order to fill that in and uh, also on the other side I have um, taken out the mirrored uh, walkways and just sort of simplified these walkways a little bit um, just so that we don't have that uh, mirroring for mirror's sake. Uh, the reason it was originally mirrored this way is that there was um, possibly going to be a capture the flag type setup. And the other thing that you have to uh, be aware of uh, with UDK is uh, since we have switched over to global illumination and using um, light mass, I have a few of these light mass importance volumes set up around the level and that just uh, makes sure that everything is lit uh, the way that it's supposed to. And so with that, uh, that basically uh, updates the old map into UDK.